Hi everyone and welcome back to some more Expeditions Viking. So, we are almost done defending against the raid, but we got one last fight left with Gunnar, whoever he is, in front of the longhouse. So, right about here. Yep, there he is. Gunnar the Peaceful. Sounds legit. Okay, before we go, we can actually equip a few items, like the torches or the mead. Increases strength for three turns. Used twice for double the effect, but... Okay, this reduces some other stats. But yeah, these are good, and we can use them in these two slots. Any type of craftable combat item. So we also have torches. We can use those. And we have a pit trap. And anything else? More mead. Okay, looks good. Let's go. Should be interesting. You are halted in your tracks by an apparition. Outside your longhouse stands a man who almost defies description. He is a giant. His fur-lined shirt is barely capable of confining his bulging muscles. He is holding a weapon in each hand, and his stance calls to mind a ball in heat. By far his most outstanding feature, however, is his beard. It's the sort of beard you might expect to find adorning the face of a Jotun. It looks like a bear crawled onto his chin and died. The giant's attention is not on you. Two of his raiders appear out of your longhouse, each carrying a large sack of what you must assume be your positions. Well? Just an old woman and a weakling. They offered no resistance. I trust you didn't harm them. Not a hair out of place on either of their heads, Gunnar. Just as you said. Okay, you better drop those sacks and draw your weapons. What in Odin's name is the meaning of this? We should just attack them. I mean, they raided us, so screw it. Attack them. I doubt that they are interested in talking. One of these days, I should. Yeah, we are already fight. stunned. Not a great start. I was hoping we might surprise them or something like that and get the first move, but apparently not. Alright. Well then, let's see. Should we focus on this guy? We might be able to kill him. We could also try to stun him. How about that? There we go. That works. And now we can focus on the other guy. See if we can kill him. We probably can't, because one of our guys is stunned, unfortunately. So, let's just hit him. Alright. Heavy swing. Ignores target's damage reduction. He does have quite a lot of damage reduction, actually. We might be able to kill him with heavy swing. Let's give it a shot. Nice, he's down. Okay. And that's about all we can really do. We can move towards the Huntress. Yep, sounds good to me. There won't be an attack of opportunity because Gunnar is stunned. So we can move past him safely. Oh, she's moving away, or he. Alright. That's fine. So. Switch to the other weapon, to the knives, they will do more damage. One more turn should do it. And right, this guy, he is still at full health. We might want to do something about that. Let's see, heavy swing again. Yeah, I guess so. Actually, no, we can't use it after moving, apparently. Alright. He will die on the next turn. Unfortunately, Kettle is down. I think that means he will get an injury. We didn't really get a chance to do anything with him. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's how it goes sometimes. Let's finish this. Ah, oh, what? Slipped. Seriously now? Well, he's dead either way. Rip. And now we are done for good, I think. No new injuries. Okay. I thought Katie will get an injury. 
Gonar fights with the strength of three men, but eventually he falls, as all men do. While you pause to catch your breath, the giant pulls himself up onto his knees. His voice booms despite his injuries. Well, that was rousing. It's been a very, very long time since I met anyone who could match me in battle. I did not expect to find such strong warriors here, in this tiny village. I fought you unprotected. I see that I was wrong. I know when I'm beaten. I surrender. We shouldn't kill him, at least not yet. We might be able to get something useful out of him when the dust has settled. Find a safe place and lock him up. And don't leave him unattended. Ketil fetches a few more of your clansmen and they tie Gunnar up with enough knots to pacify a frenzied bull. The huge man makes no effort to resist as they take him away. Okay then, clansmen consider you idolized. <laughs> well, that's good. Let's check our homestead because we did finish construction. Can we build anything new or do we not have enough materials? I guess we can't build anything new just yet. What about skill points? Do we have enough? Nope, we don't. Alright, only 11 on that guy. Not enough to get what I want. So, what do we do next? The Northman's Raid. Check on Astider and Rurik, okay. Fine, I suppose we can do that. Somewhere around here, I assume. Nothing to loot. Okay, we got a sword, some rations. Fine by me. And what's this? Nothing. Right. There they are. Rurik cracks the door open, holding a knife behind his back. Seeing your face, he steps away from the door to let you in. You're alive. Why wouldn't I be? Your mother grasps both your arms, as though to make sure they're still firmly attached. Are you both unscathed? It's over, we beat the raiders. We're fine. Two of those brutes came in here and pilfered the silverware, but they didn't harm us. Okay. It's good you offered no resistance, they knew how to fight. If I were more like you, I could have stopped them. Don't trouble yourself. Tell me, what happened outside? Is everyone safe? We beat the raiders and we captured their leader. Something is amiss. Why were the beacons not lit in warning? And the timing is so very convenient for our enemies. Perhaps we should talk to the giant. Now that he is at our mercy, he let them here. He must be able to tell us why. See what we can find out. I have Rurik here to help me clean up the mess. Alright. The plot thickens. <laughs> yeah, I like when the quest name is a spoiler in itself. So, let's go and have a chat with him then. And where is he exactly? Blacksmith, longhouse, Ketil's home. Yeah, can we see where exactly he is? Wait, was he in here? I Oh yeah, he's right here. Gunnar the Peaceful. Let's have a chat. We aren't supposed to be good at this. We don't have diplomacy. Someone has tied Gunnar to a pole in the middle of an animal pen. He must have been standing in the mud for at least three hours, yet he stands straight and looks you in the eyes when you approach him. Had a nice night. Not so boisterous now, are you? I'm sorry you've been treated this way. Give me a reason not to kill you. Well, seeing how we want information from him, let's be nice for now. Ha! You're sorry. I attacked your village and killed your clansmen. This is a better treatment than I expected. We didn't have a chance to get properly introduced. I am called Gunnar the Peaceful. I am an old heading from Westfold in the north. I assume you are the thane of this village. I am Marbs, son of Brun, and I am indeed the thane here. Tell me, Marbs, son of Brun, why am I still alive? I can offer you a way out of this, depending on how you answer my next question. Tell me why you attacked my village, or I will run you through where you stand. 
I don't think he's afraid of that, honestly. Yeah, I don't think a threat will work very well against this guy. Let's go with the second one. I will make my words count, Thane. Why did you attack my village? Your defenses are weak. No palisades. The barest excuse for earthworks. You're a tempting target. Sense hard. Right. What's hard sense again? It's eight. Enough playing around. Here's what I believe happened. Well, we do have eight in sense, so perhaps it will work? It failed. You explain your theory of how and why Gunnar's group came to set their sights on your village. But as you listen to your own words, you realize how weak it all sounds. Yeah, it didn't work. Our sense is too low. You speak not a single word of sense. I simply came to hear about your village from a traveling merchant in Kaopang, that's all. I have nothing more to add. You want me to believe you sailed down from Kaopang to steal my mother's jewelry? Your village lies along a major trade route. I assumed you would be wealthy. And how is it the beacons weren't lit? Perhaps your watchmen were doing a shit job of keeping watch. In their defense, we were being very quiet. What is your relationship to the Thane Skull Skull Cleaver? Never heard of the man. Is he some big deal down here? I know you're lying, so I'll make you an offer. Reveal who sent you here, and I swear you will go free. You swear it. What is such an oath worth to me? Well, alright, I accept your offer. I met Skull Skull Cleaver, he, and he swore your village was a worthwhile target. Wealthier than the painted ones and far less fierce. He was either lying or mistaken. Who are the painted ones? They're the tribes who live in the north, on the isles across the sea. They're called the Picts. Their weapons are poor and their homes are primitive by our standards, but they fight fiercely and they live in harsh conditions. Okay. I'll discuss these findings with my confidants. We'll talk again later. You better be telling the truth. I'll be back when I've decided what to do next. Okay. Right, we'll talk again later. Don't forget your oath, Thane Marbs. I'll be awaiting my release. Well, fair enough, we did give him our word. It's a shame eight in sense wasn't enough. I should have seen the connection. Yeah, Thane Skull mentioned his ties to Kaopang at the feast. And here's a group of Northmen attacking us out of the blow. What does he stand to gain from this? He must intend to weaken us ahead of the next thing. He's a slummy viper playing political games. I won't stand for it. I don't know, but we won't find out by standing around and talking. Well, that's true. We should take this to Astrid and hear what she thinks. Right, she knows Skole a lot better than we do. Alright. That's fine, we can do that. Let's go and have a chat then, shall we? Did the men talk? What did you find out? Skole's skull cleaver is behind this. He's been working against us for months. Thane Skole has been to the islands across the sea. He recruited the Northmen here. Skole is the cause. Then it's worse than I thought. How? The Northmen have started settling in the isles across the sea. Right. We'll deal with that later. If Skole is acting against us, do you know what that means? He'll try to get control of our clan. Well, yeah, probably. That must be his ultimate plan, yes. This gives him almost a year to weaken us further in the eyes of the king, and nobody will help us against him. He holds great favor with the king, so we can expect no political protection. Alright. Well, that sounds bad. We have almost a year. There must be something we can do. Why resist? We're already subject to the king. Skole will be another link in the chain that binds us. We cross the sea and plunder that unprotected coast I've heard so much about. 
we must seek political allies everywhere. That great kingdom across the sea, with their support, we might resist these attempts to subjugate us. We need to build our own trade routes. Well, it all points to across the sea, basically. <laughs> huh. Let's go with the third one. Everyone stops to consider the implications. Dark looks are exchanged, heavy with dubs and worry, but nobody appears able to come up with a compelling alternative. I see no other option. Your first act as Thane will be to leave your clan, just like your father. Do you have anything to contribute other than more complaints about Brun? Do you have any rebuttal or better than nah? -uh? I know you're sworn to serve Marbs, but if you're so afraid to leave, I'm sure you can convince your Thane to let you stay. I'll follow if so ordered. In fact, I'll be glad to go. However, our duties lie here with the clan. There won't be a clan much longer if we don't do something to counter Skull. Alright, well... We're not going for the glory, we're going to save the clan. I may not agree with your decision, but I respect your reasoning. I'm with you. Then we must begin to make preparations immediately. We have two months until spring. You'll need a new ship and a rear herd to crew it. Your huskars alone won't be enough. We need cargo to trade. If trade is what we're planning. <laughs> yeah, fair point. We should ask Thorfinn if he's up to the task of building the long ship. Yeah, I suppose. If I know Thorfinn at all, he's been dreaming of such a task for a long time. There are a few fighting men left in the clan, and we must leave some to protect the village. Maybe we should consider asking Gunnar to join us. That's an interesting idea. Are you mad? That is mad, but it might not be a bad idea. You saw him fight. We want a man like that on our side. But can we trust him? He's a brute, but if he'll swear fealty, he'll be our brute. Considering his present situation, I'm sure he can be won over. We'll give him a chance, but we need more than him. You'll need at least a crew of ten for a longship. Well, yeah, I suppose. Many have heard the stories of that bountiful coast. You should find no shortage of volunteers. We should bring trade goods, but what little wealth father left us was spent on the feast. I have an idea for that. Okay. And depending on our choices, our followers gain or lose morale. Aggressive followers have lost morale. Peaceful followers gained morale. Yeah, I like that. I'm sure I know what you're going to suggest. Okay. Remember, Aedis told us about the ancient grave where they say a king and a queen were buried with all their wealth. I knew it. If that's true, we could sell the lot and fill the whole ship with cargo. If that story were true, the grave would have been robbed generations ago. Let's at least talk to Aedis about it and ask what she thinks. I guess it's worth looking into, but no promises. Your greedy followers have gained morale. It does sound whimsical, but Aedis is wise and well-grounded. Talking to her wouldn't hurt. Alright then. Then begin the preparations, my son. I'll start pulling some strings, and we can learn more about Skolas' activities and plans. I hate to see you leave, but I know you'll do your father proud. Your brother and I will watch over the clan in your absence. Alright, well, that was interesting. So, let's go and talk with Gunnar. Maybe we can convince him. First of all, let's check our skill points real quick. I heard you're leaving. The Witcher's Apprentice you. accosts you outside of the Longhouse. I heard you're leaving, I want to join you. Okay. Why do you wish to join? Do I really need a reason? No, but if you have one, I want to hear it. It's just time to leave, you know. I owe a lot to old Holda, but I've learned all I can from her, and I still don't know enough. Well, far enough. 
it will be a dangerous trip, you'll have to contribute. Well, do you think there's a small chance some of you might get hurt on this really dangerous trip? You know these herbs aren't just for making people sick, right? Holda trained you as a healer. Of course, that's what witches do, you know. Well, I'll be glad to have you on board. You're letting the poisoner join us. I was the one who had her poison you. If you're still angry about it, be angry at me. <laughs> well, fair point. I spent the whole night in the freezing outhouse because of her lies. I could have given you much worse things, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's not very happy, but I suppose we need people. Now, let's talk with Gunnar, but first, check our skill points. Maybe we can level up Diplomacy? Where was Diplomacy? It was one of these. Utility skills. I think that was it. Or support skills. Leadership. No. Diplomacy. So, we could get one more in Diplomacy. I guess. It's only 9 to upgrade. In fact, we could upgrade it twice if we wanted to. But let's also upgrade other things. Let's have a look. What can we get that's actually interesting in here? I'll have to look through all these skills. Yeah, there are a lot of skills in here. We could just work on our sword skill until we get to 5 out of 5. That's probably not a bad idea. Sword base damage increased by 40. Yeah, the heavy swing ability was quite good. What's the final one? Execute. Marks the target for a killing blow on the next turn, which will instantly dismember them if it deals any damage. Wow, that sounds pretty good. We can spend the points later. Let's have a chat with Gunnar. Good to see you again. Have you decided what to do with me? I have an offer. Alright. I swore you would go free, and I intend to keep my word. I don't care where you go, but you better get out of my town. Right, let's go with the first one. I accept. <laughs> okay, that was easier than I thought. I didn't expect this to be so easy. <laughs> ha! Why would I reject such an offer? You showed remarkable prowess in defeating my men. I would love to fight by your side. Well, welcome aboard then. <laughs> We'll find you a place to stay. For now, we can at least get you out of this pig pen. I swear before Odin to follow you wherever you ask and serve you with my life. What? <laughs> that was easier than I expected. What's next? Well, we have a few things we can do from the looks of it. Huh, Tomb Raider. Yeah, we should talk with this 80s person and talk with Thorfinn about the building. A new ship. What else? Travel to hire some mercenaries. Oh, and we still have the old depths. Search the well next to dilapidated house in Skirn Forest. Right. So where's that guy who's supposed to build the ship? Good question. He should be somewhere around here. Hey, this is farm. We should also go there. Okay. So let's go here first. And have a chat. About the treasure. <laughs> so. Ho there. What brings you kids out here? Don't tell me Ranvai Sao chose this moment to give birth. I feel like I'm missing some important context here. I want to ask you about one of the stories you told when you were children. Ah, been so long. Hope I can remember. What do you need to know? You told us of a grave in a hill once, where an ancient king was buried with all his treasure. That story, yes. They said the tomb was protected by dwarves or elves or other such underground creatures, that horrible vengeance would befall any who dared to breach their sanctity. Do you know if the tomb is real? Seen it myself, traveled 
through there with Arvad when we had just been married, on our way to start our family. Spent a night in a small hamlet in the base of the hill, where I heard of the treasure and the creatures that protect it. Why are you asking about this now? I am preparing an expedition, I need treasure that I can trade for supplies. Where goes the journey? The isles across the sea, the stories tell of unprotected coasts and great riches. I now have additional questions. I thought you would. Tell you what, let me come with you to the grave, be easier if I simply show you the way. What about your sons? They're old enough to look after the farm in my absence. Alright, fair enough. Do you know how to defend yourself? I have a little training, if that's what you mean, but I'm no flayer or lady. Alright. If you wish to join, you're welcome. Well, sure, I mean, we need people, right? I guess we should just recruit everyone we can for now. And there's the location revealed on the map. Okay, then. Quest log. So, can we build up the homestead? Mm, not right now, no. Alright. I guess that's fine. Here are all the characters we got so far. So, how good is this guy? He has 10 in strength, 8 in endurance. Yeah, he seems pretty decent. Which skills does he have? Let's see. Dual wielding, charge, rebuke. Okay, Dane Axe. Anyway, I'm going to make a cut here and continue in the next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.